titled today prayer that changes things or prayer that works. And I got to tell you guys something. I'm going to release a devotional today called um, um, Nothing is Impossible. It's a written devotional. I wrote it today. It talks a little bit more about my son Josiah's journey to healing. When that devotional drops, I need y'all to do me a favor. Those of y'all that are on the LMJ Ministries, the LMJ, share that devotional. A childlike faith. Share that devotional. Someone may need to be just encouraged today to understand that nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. The enemy wants you to give up in prayer. The, the, the enemy wants you to believe that your prayers are not working. The enemy wants you to, to faint. He wants you to do that. So when that devotional drops today, do me a favor. Share the written devotional. Let's put it out there so that people can see this childlike faith of this 14 year old he just so happens to belong to me and they can get encouraged to press up a little more hey bro i'm so glad you called back up so i told you today i was going to teach you how to pray for yourself and for others and it is one simple but powerful scripture in ephesians and i'm telling you prayer works you have to get the understanding in your head and take the pressure off yourself from trying to make things happen with people or in your life and what what usually happens with us is we put the pressure on ourselves to change ourselves and we put the pressure on ourselves to change people. Jude 20, 20 reminds us to pray in our most holy faith, to pray in our most holy faith. And what he's saying there and praying in our most holy faith, praying with the mind, mind of Christ, praying with the fear of the Lord, praying with expectation, praying, believing that what you're praying for is really going to happen. What you're praying for is really going to happen. Praying with an expectation, praying and believing change, change is going to occur. And so when we don't know who we are, or we're having a hard time gaining our identity in Christ, the following words from the Bible become a prayer. It's a prayer that Paul prayed. It's a pray, prayer we can pray for others. And it's a prayer that we can pray for ourselves. I have watched this prayer transform and change the lives of people around me because what has happened is I have taken the responsibility off LMJ. It ain't on me. It's not on me to finish the work. It's not on me to complete myself. It's not on me to complete my person. And so this prayer here being prayed in faith opened the eyes of my heart, opens my understanding through the Holy Spirit and gives me the wisdom that I need to move forward. A lot of the reason we haven't received the true revelation of who we are, we don't understand how our gifts and talents are for the glory of the kingdom, is because we really don't know about what, the, what this word says about us. So when Paul was praying for them. He was praying for their spiritual wisdom. He was point, praying for them to get a revelation of who they were in Christ. He was praying for them to be able to receive the glory of God in his life. He was praying for a more bolder faith. He was praying for them to understand God's love. He was praying for them to understand the redemption. And when we pray this prayer that changes, this prayer that really works because we're praying the word of God, then what, what, what happens is the responsibility comes off of us and the angels go and do work for us. If you didn't know angels were working for you, you need to find the evidence in the Bible. Go to Ecclesiastes 5. It talks about the temple messenger listening. So you don't have to struggle with yourself and you don't have to struggle with anyone else. Stop fighting relationships. Stop fighting in relationships. Stop trying to prove to people that even with God, I'm just trying to prove to you. I mean, if you would just do with us. No, Stop trying to prove that God works. He works. And if you really want someone to get the revelation of what you're saying, then get in position and pray that the Holy Spirit talks to them just like he talks to you. It's not a struggle. It's not a stress. It's not a strain. It's a prayer. It's a prayer. It's a prayer. We try to do way too many things in our own strength. We are not to be struggling with people. We are not to be straining. We are not. It's a prayer. And so this is something that I pray. I pray over my sons. I pray over myself. I pray over my ministry team. 
I pray over people who I come encounter with. When I know people have a blind eye to the things of God, this is the scripture that I resort to in prayer. And I, this, and it's one more, it's one that I think is in Ezekiel, it's either in Ezekiel 26 and 36 or 36 and 26. If I see someone as a hardened heart and the word has pierced their heart, there's another prayer that I pray for their heart to be softened so that it can become pliable and that the seed, the word of God can get in. You don't have to struggle with yourself or anyone else. Do you know why? Because Philippians 1 6 says, be confident of this, that he who began a good work is going to finish it. It's going to finish it until Christ returns. So if somebody starts asking you about your dysfunction, about where you are, about what's ha happening around you, I want you to simply say, hey, I'm the, the Holy Spirit working. God is still finishing me. It's a good work being completed in me. Don't judge me where I am right now. Judge me according to the most holy faith. See, ask the Holy Spirit to show you my future and get in position and pray for me. If you still see that I'm acting out of character, get in position to work because there's a work that's being completed in, in me and that work is in layers. Five, the, all the, the stuff that's been filtered and put on us, that stuff has to come off on layers. So you got to be real, real patient with yourself and also with others. So let's look at what the word says. Let, let's look at what the word says about this situation. So Paul was talking to Ephesus and he wasn't like the other letters Paul wrote. He was also writing from prison. The other letters that Paul wrote were a little bit different. He was more giving them rules and regulations. He starts talking to Ephesus so that they could understand who they are as the church. We're the church. So Ephesus could understand who they were as the church. And he starts talking to them because he wants them to understand their righteousness. He wants them to understand their strength. He doesn't want them to be deceived. If you're, can I share something with you? If you're out of position in the kingdom, if the enemy has you confused about your gifts, your talents, who you are and how important you are to God, then there's a gap in the kingdom and you're not in position fulfilling your call and the purpose of who calls you. So we're going to pray you into position today and you're going to learn how to pray yourself into position today. And you're going to have to learn how to pray those around you. No more stress, no more struggling, no more becoming consumed or overwhelmed because you think people don't get it. Nah, we're going to start praying ourselves in a position. So we're going to go to Ephesians um, first. We're still in the first chapter. We're going to go to the 15th verse and we'll read from there. It says, ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I have not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly asking God, the glorious father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called his holy people who are his rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believed him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead, seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in heavenly realm. I, that's the prayer that I pray. And so if someone is struggling with who they are, if somebody is struggling with receiving the word, if someone is just struggling in position, or even if I'm struggling, then this is what I pray. And in, this is the New Living Translation version, version and NIV and other other versions, it says the, the, that your eyes of your heart be open. That's what it says, the eyes of your heart be open. And so I begin to pray those things. Father, let the eyes of their heart be open. Father God, give them spiritual wisdom and insight. Father God, so they may grow in the knowledge of who you are. Father, I pray that their hearts be flooded with light so that they can understand the confident hope for which they've been called. Father, that they are your holy people, that they are your rich and glorious inheritance. I pray that they understand God's incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe in Jesus' name. Amen. It's that simple. It's that simple. And even if it rises up and it looks like they're not displaying this, remind the enemy because the enemy is going to try to flood you that this isn't working. Nah, I've, Ephesians 1, 17 and 18 did 
I have Ephesians 1, 17 and 18 in it. I've prayed that the eyes of their the eyes of their heart be open. I've already prayed that they be enlightened to the hope and call of who Christ Jesus is on their life. And I'm going to rest that once I prayed it, the word works. I'm going to rest in that. See, the next part of this is once you've prayed it, you got to rest in it. You got to leave it at the point that you believe God. This is such a powerful prayer. This is a prayer that changes lives. This is a prayer that shakes foundation. Jeremiah 29, 11 already tells us there's a plan that God has for us. Jeremiah 1 and 5, you've been formed in your, your, your mother's womb. I form you. Those I foreknew, I predestined. So even if it looks like it's not working, Romans 8 and 28 through 20, we know that all things work together for the good of those that love the Lord. So this one powerful couple verses of scripture is the prayer that changes lives. And then you just got to sit back and be patient. And if overwhelming thoughts come to you and you think that this isn't working, Shut them down, capture them immediate, pluck the weeds up and call on your most holy faith and say, nope, I've already left this to prayer. I've already left this to prayer. I don't have to say much. You ain't got to say much. You ain't got to send them subliminal messages on Facebook. You don't have to give out subliminal messages. You just got a result to your prayer is going to be answered through these few little verses right here. The word of God is powerful. The word of God is a change agent. The word of God is what will make a difference in the lives. I pray that I'm praying that prayer from here on out every day for everybody who connects to Coffee and Conversations. Why? Because you need to know you, your eyes need to be open. Your spiritual eyes need to be open. You need to be able to hear. You need to be connected to the Holy Spirit. You need to understand God's grace and goodness and mercy and his riches for you, not just in heaven, here on earth. You need to grow in wisdom. You need to grow in insight. You need to be flooded with light so that you can come out of darkness and get the revelation of who you are in this world. All of this, it, all of this little bit in the scripture that you understand God's greatness and goodness for who you are. This is the prayer that works and changes. And then I told you, I think it's Ezekiel either 26, 36 or 36, 26. If you're dealing with someone or even for yourself, if you, if you know you're still hard and you know when you still hard in some areas, you know when you're still hard in some areas. If you know you're still controlling, you're still manipulative, you're still angry, you're still critical, you're still overbearing, you still got all these things that you're struggling with in your life, then you pray, Father God. Father, I pray that you give me a heart of flesh and that I do not have a stony heart. Because once we've been through the things that we've been through in life, it's easy for our heart to become hardened in some areas. You don't want a hardened heart. A hardened heart doesn't prepare you to be able to receive what you need to receive from the things of God. It doesn't prepare you. And so we're going to pray that your eyes be open, the eyes of your heart that's different than just your physical eyes. The eyes of your heart is what allows you to receive and see things the way that God intended for you to receive and receive. So we praying that the eyes of your heart be open. We praying that the eyes of the person's heart, when you know someone is on a destructive path, dealing with addictions, dealing with issues, you ain't got to struggle. You ain't got to push. You ain't got to cuss them out. You ain't got to go there. You ain't got to the Bible beat them up. You have to just get in position and prayer, pray and b believe your prayers are working. We struggle with so much because we won't take the position of prayer. We won't take the position of prayer. Can I, I, I was listening to a pastor the other day and he simply said this. He said, if you're fighting, if you're fighting more than you're, if you're fighting, if you see more fighting going on, it means you're not praying enough. If there's more fighting, if there's more arguing, if they're more struggling, then it means you're not spending more time or the time that you should in prayer. In the time you should in prayer. I know, Tamila, I need somebody to find me that scripture. It's either, it's, it's either Ezekiel 26 and 36 or Ezekiel 36 and 26. Yeah, you need a heart of flesh, not a stony heart. Not a stony heart, not a stony heart, a heart of flesh. Lord, give them a heart of flesh. Because a heart of flesh is going to become tender to the things of God. You're going to become sensitive to people around you. You're going to become sensitive more to the word of God. Our hearts become hardened when we've gone through life. Our hearts become hardened 
when we've gone through life. And so when we've experienced different things, we become hard in the heart. Um, that's why there it is. Thank you, Jazz. Thank you, my sweet love. That's why a lot of times we miss things because we don't know that our heart has become hardened. I can always tell when someone is operating in a hardened heart because it's, it's exemplified in pride, right? In doubt, in fear, in worry. Those are the samples that you got a hardened heart. Those, those things are fruits of having a hardened heart. Can't nobody tell you nothing. Can't, I mean, it just goes on and on and on. And so we're going to play even for yourself that my heart is a heart of flesh, <laughs> that my heart is a heart of flesh, that I'm always sensitive and tender to the things of God, to the word of God, so that I can become all that God created to me. That's the prayer that works. That's the prayer that changes things. That's what you pray for people. That's what you pray for this nation. That's what you pray for your children. And then you take the struggle and the pressure off you and you watch the power of God work. And then when you pray the prayer, you release it and receive it by faith. And even if the symptoms come up, I like to use the word symptoms. Even if the symptoms come up, you can be steadfast in knowing, no, I already inoculated. I already gave this thing a booster shot. I'm not going to pay attention to what the symptoms are. I'm going to take the pressure off myself personally and see the good works be finished. Like it says in Philippians 1 and 6, being confident in this, that he who began a good work will do it in this person and in myself. And then chilling and being real patient. Faith does not, faith does not expire. Faith does not, faith has no expiration date. Faith does not quit. Faith does not quit. Faith does not expire. Love does not give up. I tell people all the time, if you love somebody and you hoping for the best and you believe in, love doesn't cancel out. And you're like, well, what, if, what, if, what if they just don't seem to be changing? Love doesn't cancel out. We know what 1 Corinthians 13, 4, 8, love is patient, kind, not jealous, boastful, proud, rude, does not demand its own way, is not irritable, and it keeps no records of being wrong, does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out, love never gives up, love never loses faith, it's always hopeful and endures through every circumstance and situation every circumstance and situation. So I gave you the strategy of prayer for yourself and for everyone else. And be patient. Y'all stop thinking people going to change. You didn't change overnight. Stop thinking people going to change overnight. You didn't, ch you didn't change overnight. You ain't make some miracle change overnight. Be, be patient with people. Be patient with people. Be, it, 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 it's going to work itself out in due season if you take the responsibility and pressure off yourself and put the responsibility and pressure on God. On God. It goes back into the place of God and being patient and loving a person through a circumstance or situation. What Please stay tuned for this week's announcements. Don't forget to join us this week. Ladies, Bible study is done for the year. But... We can't wait to see you when we come back in the new year. Also, join us for the devotion this week, Tuesday through Friday. But please be aware that schedule may change due to the holidays. We will still have the Saturday morning prayer call at 7 a.m. Hope to see you there and have a happy Thanksgiving. Ladies, you still have time to register for Pillow Talk, the birthday edition. We are sold out on in-person spots, but you can still catch us online. You can register at lmjministries.org slash stop. Hope to see you there. Lakeisha M. Johnson, also known as LMJ, is an evangelist, teacher, entrepreneur, mentor, author, trainer, and community advocate. She is the founder of LMJ Ministries and CEO of LMJ Inc., a printing, publishing, and consulting firm. Lakeisha self-published her first book in April 2019, entitled The Launch, a book for anyone who wants to start anything. 
She is the host of Coffee and Conversations, a digital interactive daily devotional on 11 podcast outlets, including Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, Facebook Live, YouTube, and Instagram. She's been heard in over 40 countries. She is the creator and host for Pillow Talk, an exclusive event created by women, especially for women. Lakeisha is mission-minded. She is focused on serving God by serving others. If you had to describe her in one word, it would be tenacious. Lakeisha believes in order to impact our communities and make significant impact, a person should be actively engaged in service and or entrepreneurship and love. Lakeisha's famous quote is, go be loved today. Ladies and gentlemen, Lakeisha M. Johnson.